Hey friends, Lee Brown here. Welcome back to My Kitchen, My Rules. And if you do notice, I don't have any makeup on because I'm tired. And so we're gonna make something that I heard was very easy from Betty Feaser's cookbook, from Betty Feaser's Best, the TV Tested Recipes. We're fixing her recipe for barbecue meatballs. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I'm slightly suspicious because it says to shape these into patties. And I've never had a meatball shaped like a patty. Last time I checked burgers and salmon patties and things, that's how their shape is. So I might even break Betty's rules this evening. And that could be because what I'm having tonight for a cocktail is Floyd's. Y'all ever heard of Floyd's? It's a spiked half and half. I never had heard of it. It's apparently from Wisconsin, but I found it in Tennessee when we were on vacation. And they only sold them in the suitcase packs, and so that's what I got, and so that's what we're having this evening. And I know y'all have had days like that, but you know what? Your family has still got to eat, and in America, we feed our families. All right, so we're going to set the oven to 375. See, that's how y'all know we are way out of whack here. And I'm not suggesting that people in other countries don't feed their families before y'all start atting me. I'm just saying... <sighs> that I, I don't really know what I'm saying this evening. I'm tired. So anyway, here we go. We're gonna put some breadcrumbs in our bowl here. You need some breadcrumbs. Now what I have this evening, I have half <laughs> Harris Teeter and half Lowe's. So this will be the recipe that brings the grocery store chains together. And I really, I know you can use like, you know, bread to make breadcrumbs. And you need two, no, I need a cup of these. If you're wondering why I'm making two cups, I had two pounds of ground beef in the fridge. And one thing I do know about meatballs is that they do keep, they are wonderful to freeze. And so I'm going to have enough for supper and enough to freeze for the next time. So maybe this will be real good because we have two entirely different textures here. I don't know what I am thinking, but we're fixing to find out. So we have the Lowe's Foods one is the Italian breadcrumbs, which looks like it has some seasonings in it. And the <laughs> Harris Teeter one was Japanese style. So we're having international meatballs tonight. Congratulations. All right, so two cups of breadcrumbs. We need a half a cup of milk. And for all y'all that are math geniuses, you know that means we need a cup of milk, but we need a cup of water, I think, too. Mix the breadcrumbs with the milk. But let me dump out the water. I was trying to be all advanced and have my ingredients laid out and Apparently, I shouldn't do that because it doesn't work with the style here. So, you would normally need a half a cup of milk. So, since we're doubling, there's a cup of milk. And then, we are going to mix those up together. So, let's stir them up a little bit and get our breadcrumbs moistened. Now, if you want to use actually homemade breadcrumbs, like, you know, from the bread that you're letting go stale, then you can actually do a better job if that you can set it in the oven for a minute and crisp it up, it turns into crumbs more easily that way. Because if you use this soft bread, it can turn into balls when you're trying to turn it into crumbs. And that's not exactly helpful when we're trying to turn things into breadcrumbs. Because I don't know about y'all, but people are like, oh, use stale bread. And around here, stale bread, it goes moldy before it goes stale. I guess it's something to do with the kind of bread I buy, or I keep it in the bread box. That's why they make those things, I imagine. So anyway, we got two pounds of ground beef, which would normally be one pound. But remember, we're doubling. I gotta keep reminding y'all that. Then we need some salt and pepper, and we need apparently a teaspoon-ish. So we're gonna need two teas. Oh, that was a gracious plenty. All right, we have a little extra salt this evening because that's apparently going to make us all better. I was having to explain to somebody in one of my videos that the reason I cuss um, sometimes, I try not to cuss in my cooking videos because I know some of y'all let your children watch this. And in fact, I need to find the name of a young man in Iowa who enjoys cooking my recipes. And by the way, I need to if I can find his name. I'll mention it after the commercial break because legit, this one is easy enough that any age group or skill group can make it. So we're just mixing up our patties, <laughs> our patties. I still can't believe she turns them into patties. And by the way, y'all, the thing I love about Betty Feaser, God rest her soul. I mean, golly, I wish I could have met her. I mean, she was just on TV. You know, she was so famous in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
we didn't have a chance to meet, you know, but I just wish. Anyway, if her kids are watching this, y'all, I, I think your mama was the greatest. And I, I still am so excited to have her set as my conference room at my real estate office. So if you're curious about these cookbooks, they still exist on eBay and you can find them in antique shops and consignment shops. And then if you get all excited about the recipes, you can come visit my office and we'll let you make your picture in the Betty Feaser kitchen. I had this local realtor, uh, Thecla Widenhouse, she's just the nicest ever. Thecla made an apron and brought it to the kitchen so people could wear it in their photos and see that's one of the cool things about real estate is competitors learn how to get along with one another because it's just nicer that way. All right, so now we're going to get them into our pan. And I would normally use like a corn and wear dish, but since I'm making a whole bunch, I'm gonna put them on a sheet pan here. But you know what, let me put a little bit of cooking spray on that just because it'll be a bear to clean up later if I don't. Now, I don't mess with the whole Crisco routine when I'm doing just bacon because there's no baked goods and bread that need to come out of here. So anyway, I imagine I better get my remote handy. So in our family, and Betty, God rest your soul, I'm making balls because that's what it says. I make them about yay big where they're in the neighborhood of an inch across. Because that's the size my family likes. And I'll tell you, I see all sizes when I go to get a meatball sub somewhere. Now, if you're doing meatballs, the ones I normally make are a combination of ground turkey and ground beef, and you can toss in some ground chicken or whatever's on sale. And I, I should probably make my favorite recipe sometime because they're really yummy. I'm making these because, you know, it's part of the whole Honor and Betty Feaser thing. And, it was the recipe that was staring at me. Y'all know ever notice that if you open up your Bible, sometimes you're supposed to just read the verse that the Bible throws at you, and that's the Lord talking to you, and I'm pretty sure that's the truth. And so today I tried that with my cookbook, and that's how this recipe showed up, and I said, it's like the Lord knew, because Betty Crocker, I mean, Betty Feaser, I guarantee, is right up there in his ear. She said, look, Lee Brown has some ground beef in the refrigerator. Why don't you go on and open that page up and shazam, here we are. I found a chunk of meat that didn't mix properly, so we grabbed some of the spare breadcrumbs, and we don't know if that one's Japanese or Italian, so there we go, and we'll mix it up. All right, friends, you're gonna have a heck ton of meatballs on your tray here in just a minute. I'll come back after the break, and we'll have all the balls made, and I'll show y'all the next step. Oh, what I was gonna tell y'all about Betty's recipes that I love so much is that she always has these little commentaries on her favorite ones and so you can tell which ones she really really loved and then which ones were fillers but on this one it says this is one of my very favorite recipes it makes an inexpensive meat taste like a million dollars see and when you come back i'll show you how we're going to take it make it taste like a million dollars and i think we're all going to love it okay so we're back from our commercial break of sponsors i don't have but you can use your imagination. And so the shout out, I was trying to think of the name earlier. This is for you, Max Sanders in Iowa. So you can make this supper, but Max, if you're using your oven, please make sure your mom or dad are around. You know, don't just surprise them. If you're gonna surprise them, it's with a bowl of cereal or something, but just be, be chill like that. And uh, it was your realtor, Scott Wendell, who told me about you. So. If you're super excited, then make sure that Scott helps your parents buy a house for you near Iowa State so that you can be a cyclone in the future. And if y'all buy a condo now, Max, by the time you go to college, your parents will be in a good spot. So, hey, Max's parents, Scott can hook you up. And Kristen, God bless you, woman. You're a saint to be married to Scott. All right, so anyway, here's our ingredients for the next step. So that two pounds of meatballs, y'all, I had to get a second tray. So this is how many y'all we have here. And after I fix them, I will be freezing over half of them. So I'll have enough spaghetti, spaghettis. I have enough meatballs to have spaghetti forever. All right, so the ingredients I just added to my mixing bowl here, I had a half an onion and a half a pepper, and I was gonna use green pepper, but the one I got out of the refrigerator was kind of sad. So I threw it away and I had an orange one, and so it's in the ballpark. And so we're having an orange pepper here. Color look fine. It looks like there's like carrots in it or something. I don't know. So now we need to add Let's see, Worcestershire sauce. We need three tablespoons. <laughs> see, that's why we love Betty Feaser right there. The woman understood the beauty of Worcestershire sauce. 
And frankly, I don't think you can use too much of it. My mama used it all the time fixing homemade Chex Mix. And then my sister and I would come home from school and get a bowl of Chex cereal and throw Worcestershire on it and pretend it was Chex Mix and eat it because that's how much we love Worcestershire sauce. All right, we need to get a half a cup of vinegar. Remember, we're doubling everything. So in a normal world, you would only be using a quarter of a cup, but we need water too. I need my container. So we got a cup of water and then we're gonna do a half a cup. And of course I'm using Bragg's ACV and you could use white vinegar too, but I like the flavor that ACV adds to things. We need, oh, a tablespoon of sugar. I forgot we were gonna need our Dixie crystals. So let's get our Dixie crystals friends, because you know, it's kind of shocking how many recipes include the best sugar on the planet. So there's one tablespoon and two tablespoons. I'm not 100% sure what that's gonna to add to this recipe. Best part of the fun of cooking, y'all. You get to experiment and find new favorites. Because Betty said this is her very favorite. Tastes like a million dollars. Okay, so now we need ketchup. I use Heinz without the extra added sugar. This one's, oh, actually, no, somebody bought the wrong one. We're gonna have to have a conversation in the house. This one has high fructose, which I don't normally allow to be purchased. You need a half a cup, which should be about that long of a squeeze. And then we need a second half a cup because we're making the double recipe. And then maybe I should make a video later of the person who went to the grocery store and brought home the wrong ketchup, but that's all right. I'm pretty convinced that some people do that so that they won't get sent to the grocery store. Is that how it works in your house? And we got our peppers and onions. And so there's your ingredients, friends. I'm gonna whisk it up here and get that ketchup dispersed amongst the vinegar. Smells good. I mean, frankly, it can't smell bad with vinegar. Now, Betty says, combine this and pour it around. Well, she says around the patties, which we've already discussed. Pour it around the balls. So let's surround the balls with sauce. Put half of it on this tray. And then we're gonna put half of it on this tray. I don't have the foggiest idea how it's gonna come out, but you know what? I trust Betty Feaser, and so let's just do that. Put the rest of it over here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna roll it around a little bit and see if we can't get a little bit of the sauce on all the balls. Then we're gonna put this in the oven. And friends, this cooks at 375, uncovered for 45 minutes. Now, when it comes out and they're done, you can freeze fixed meatballs and then you just take them out and nuke them later when you rest the roll. All right, so I will see y'all after this uh, commercial break of no sponsor and we'll see what the finished product looks like. Okay, let's see what we have here. First of all, garlic bread was a secret thing I made while y'all weren't looking. And if I need to show you how to make garlic bread, then you probably shouldn't be watching cooking channels. I think you should just go on out to eat. And so let's take the first tray out. It looks like that sauce caramelized at the bottom, but it looks pretty tasty. We're gonna find out. They look a little cooked, but I don't know, 45 minutes might have been too much. So I imagine next time I might cook these a little bit shorter, but Lord of mercy, look how that baked down onto that tray. Mm -hmm. It's not sauce anymore. Now it is a finish. So I still think this is gonna be really good. Let's taste a little bit. It's gonna be 14 million degrees, but I'm sacrificing for y'all the meat's cooked. My good. Mm-hmm. You know what? Probably shouldn't even made a pot of spaghetti and sauce. Drink my white claw and eat some meatballs and some bread and call it a night. Enjoy it. I'll see y'all next time. Make sure you subscribe for more. And if you want a Dixie Crystals coupon, put your name in the comments and put your hand up. And then maybe we can get some of these other brands to hook us up with coupons too. They totally should. Hey, Max, let me know if yours comes out even better. See ya.